Hey, my name is Trent. Welcome to New Stories YouTube channel. Today we'll be discussing the answer to the question, how can I control my anger? As we continue in our devotional through the book of James, and in light of James chapter 1 verses 19 through 21 specifically, I would like to help answer that question. Let's start by reading this passage of scripture from James. James 1, 19 through 21 says this. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Well, you know, there's so much packed into those three short verses, and I won't have the time in this short video to fully unpack and expound on everything we just read, but there are a couple things I would like to focus on as we specifically think through the question, how can I control my anger? First, I want to point out that James, like Paul in Ephesians, he's not saying do not be angry. Rather, we are instructed to be slow to anger. I find that interesting because there are so many things in Scripture that we are specifically told not to do. Like the Ten Commandments, for example. Do not steal, do not murder, do not covet, etc. But we do not find the command, do not be angry. Rather, we are told to be slow to anger. And when angry, do not sin. So the question really becomes, how can I control my anger rather than allowing my anger to control me? Anger is a powerful emotion that God created, and we do not need to be afraid of it, but we do need to be in control of it. More importantly, we need to allow God to be in control of it as we submit to Him in faith. Now we're living in very emotional times, and uh, we have the COVID pandemic and all the civil unrest surrounding systemic racism in our country, and it is very easy to allow the emotion of anger to rise up and start to control us. This is where we really need wisdom and the Spirit of God to temper our anger. James starts out in verse, um, verse 19 of chapter 1, instructing us to be quick to hear and slow to speak. And I think James is intentionally instructing us in this particular order because without first learning to be a better listener and without learning to hold our tongue, it is going to be more difficult to be slow to anger. There just may be a very good reason that God gave us two ears and only one mouth, you know what I mean? Maybe we ought to listen more than we speak. I think there's something worth contemplating there. Anyways, I believe scripture actually liberates us and does not condemn us for feeling the emotion that is anger. But as we read on in James, James instructs us further by saying that man's anger does not produce the righteousness of God. And so we must give our anger over to God and allow him to work out the truth of his word, the fruit of the spirit in our lives. I'm sure that all the injustice and the evil in this world angers God much more than it angers us. Yet God is so patient. It really blows my mind to think about how patient and long suffering God is towards me and towards this world. As we desire to live like Christ and represent Christ, we must be careful to not allow our anger to control us. And we must be careful to not give full vent to our anger. Again, it is definitely okay to be angry, but as Proverbs 29 11 says, fools vent all their anger, but the wise person quietly holds it back. And verse 22 goes on to say in Proverbs 29, it goes on to say that a person who is controlled by their anger commits all kinds of sins. I learned very early on as a young parent that it is not good to discipline my children out of my anger. You see, although it is perfectly normal for us to feel anger due to someone else's foolish decisions, in this example, my children, I know that if I react initially with the emotion of anger, there's a very high probability that I may do something or say something that I could in fact uh, regret, regret, something sinful that I might regret. So as difficult as it may be, no matter the circumstance, I must be aware of my anger and the potential outcome if not tempered. Honestly, not even joking around, just driving around to LA can really be a good way to practice being slow to anger. Because boy, is it easy to let road rage just burst out of me. Uh, even a pastor 
So uh, yeah, if you want to pr practice being slow to anger, just drive around LA. <laughs> I once heard a, a saying that says, temper is such a valuable thing, it is a shame to lose it. What a good statement that is. And one of my favorite Bible commentators, Warren Wearsby, puts it like this. Anger is just the opposite of the patience that God wants to produce in our lives as we mature in Christ. So is anger a sin? No, absolutely not. However, anger is a powerful emotion that does have the ability to overpower us if not tempered with the Spirit of God and the Word of God. So as James says in verse 21, we must submit to the Word of God with meekness. And meekness is actually the opposite of wrath. Romans 12 also instructs us that we must allow room for the wrath of God to work righteously. It is our job, rather, to display the fruit of the Spirit and to overcome evil with good, rather than being overcome by evil. So practically speaking, if we want to be in control of our anger, rather than allowing anger to control us, I suggest asking ourselves two things. First, I must ask myself, when has my quick-tempered anger ever produced anything good? Again, James tells us to be slow to anger, but when we have been quick to anger in the past, has anything really good ever come out of that anger? We must think about that and be willing to learn from our own past mistakes as well as other people's mistakes. And then secondly, we must ask ourselves, are we really trusting God's word and being patient for his righteous outcomes? It is extremely important that we start our day in God's word with meekness and humility, acknowledging that we too deserve God's righteous wrath. And as James says, we must allow the implanted Word of God to cultivate in our hearts. We must confess our sins daily and pull the weeds, so to speak, out of our hearts in order that the soil of our heart will be prepared for the seeds of the implanted Word to take root and produce the fruit of the Spirit, such as self-control, gentleness, patience, and meekness, and those things to, to come out of our lives. So lastly, in order to be in control of our anger, rather than being controlled by our anger, we must first be aware of the power of anger, that it could easily cause us to sin. We must be willing to listen patiently. We must give ample time to calm down before speaking. And we must allow God to slow our anger down as we humbly submit to His Word that is implanted in our heart. It's all right there in James 1, 19-21. So I encourage you to dwell on this passage and allow it to take root in your heart in the name of Jesus. Well, let me know what your, th your thoughts on this passage of James uh, in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this video at all, uh, please hit the like button and make sure to subscribe uh, to our channel for future content. See you soon.